the Laplace transform maps a function of time to a function of s. So at a certain abstraction level, we are moving from time domain to frequency domain. So in the first two learning outcomes, we were specific to time domain analysis, but right now we are moving towards frequency domain analysis. So specifically for frequency domain analysis, we have several variants, the first of which is the Laplace transform. If we construct a sphere and say that we have a Laplace transform over here, within this, we would have a Fourier transform. And within this, we are having Fourier series. So Fourier series is for periodic signals. Fourier transform is for periodic and aperiodic signals. But Fourier series and Fourier transforms converge based on some conditions which we call as Dirichlet conditions. In these uh, Dirichlet condition, a very important condition is that the signal x of t for which you need to take an, uh, a transform, either Fourier transform or you need to find the coefficient uh, in terms of Fourier series if it is periodic. A very important thing is that this should be integrable. If it is integrable, then you can take the Fourier transform, otherwise not. And then there are some other conditions like the signal x of t should have finite number of local maxima and local minima and it should not have an infinite number of discontinuities. So therefore, Laplace transform is actually more general. In terms of signals, some signals which are not integrable, they can still have a Laplace transform. And in terms of systems, we can perform analysis for both stable as well as unstable systems. So specifically for the systems, we know that working in algebraic expressions is more easier as compared to working on differential equations. So uh, the plus transform gives us an opportunity to work in polynomials and in algebraic expressions rather than differentials. For example, for a simple RLT circuit. With L1 Henry resistor 3 ohm and capacitance 1 by 2 farad. Y of T and the input X of T. Input is the voltage and output is the current. So the differential equation for this circuit is But for LTI systems and using Laplace transform, we can say d by dt simply s. And s is a variable for which we made the initial transformation from time domain to the s domain, frequency domain. 
we can express this differential equation as simply s squared plus 3s plus 2 y of t s x of t that is a linear constant coefficient differential equation transformed into polynomial forms q of s and e of s hence it is very convenient to work in the s domain rather than the uh, time domain uh, correspond, corresponding to the differential equations secondly we have started working uh, on the frequency using laplace transform so if we understand laplace transform we can easily translate the same intuition to fourier transform and fourier series we can say that laplace transform and fourier transform are closely related we will look into this next let us look into a general input output uh, system model and we know that complex exponentials or the eigen functions that is if you set x as est so you are going to get the same eigen function at the output plus some eigen value so this is our eigen function and this value would correspond to an eigen value let us see what would be the eigen value so for this particular system we know that y of t can be obtained from the impulse response h of t which would be converted with the input x of t note that the system uh, that we have considered is a linear time invariant system so we can express this as an integral formulation that is h of tau x of d e minus tau d tau and this would be equivalent to so we for x of t we're going to put the value of es so if x of t e is est x of t minus tau would be es t minus tau so we can say this is simply es t times e minus s tau d tau but note that the integration variable is tau and not t so we can take this out of the integration so for the input est at the output we have again extracted out the same function est so this is something that we call as the transfer function h of s so the eigen value over here is h of s and you would note that h of s is not dependent on time so because we have integrated with respect to time so the time variable would disappear so h of s is independent of time and it is something that is evaluated at s at a particular value of s it is a fixed value constant value evaluated at particular s and it is just going to scale up and down the amplitude of the eigen function est so we know that h of s from here is simply h so let us change the variable from tau to t so this expression relates the impulse response h of t to the system function or transfer function so from here we can have a generic expression of the laplace transform that is if you have a time domain signal x of t what is 
the Laplace transform of this signal. So for the impulse response in time domain, this is our system function. So similarly, x of s is an integration minus infinity to infinity x of t e minus st dt. So this is the expression of Laplace transform. Now this s is simply sigma plus j omega. So this is the real part and this is the complex part. E minus sigma t times E minus j omega t. This is coming from here. This is a sinusoid or a complex exponential. So in real or in complex plane, it would be oscillating. And E minus sigma t, right? So this could either grow exponentially if the value of sigma is less than zero or it could converge if the value of sigma is greater than zero. So I have considered the case for time greater than zero only. If sigma is less than zero, that is this value is less than zero, so the exponential is growing. Uh, growing. If we multiply this with the complex exponential, we would have an increasing function or a growing function. But at the same time, when sigma is greater than zero, so e minus sigma t is converging. So in this case, this overall function would be damping as time tends to infinity. So this means we have an S plane where we have the real value sigma and then omega. Let's say this is j omega. So this S plane has four quadrants. So in quadrant one and four, this, the value of sigma is positive and similarly on two and three, it is negative and now in this plot, if we set sigma equal to zero, so that is the value of sigma is at origin. So this whole plot lapses simply j omega. So this is something that we call as Fourier transform. So that is x of s. This is simply x of sigma plus j omega. So if we set sigma equal to zero, so we would be left with x of j omega. And this corresponds to the Fourier transform. The so Fourier transform is simply x of j omega integration from minus infinity to infinity x of t e minus j omega t d. In short, x of t is multiplied with the complex exponential. This is a signal which is a complex exponential. If we multiply x of t and uh, if we multiply x of t with a complex exponential and then integrate it, we're going to get a Fourier transform. x of t multiplied with e minus j omega t and then integration leads to Fourier transform. Let us see if we can relate this to the Fourier transform. We're saying x of s minus infinity to infinity x of e. But right now we expand e minus st. We expand s in terms of sigma t and j omega t. So we can say e minus sigma t e minus j omega t. So this would x of t e minus sigma t e minus j omega t dt. If you combine these two together, this thing would convert to x of t 
multiplies with e minus sigma t so we can call this as x tilde of t next you can use all of this over here to obtain a laplace transform an important thing to note over here is usually when we talk about laplace transform we are integrating from minus infinity to infinity this is something that we also call as bilateral transform but we also have a unilateral transform where the integration starts from zero and terminates at infinity so unilateral transform often helps us in solving uh, systems which have certain initial conditions so the similarity of these two is something that we expressed as at the second point that is the laplace transform and the fourier transform are closely related in the next video we would be looking into some examples and the concept of region of convergence roc uh, pertinent to uh, the laplace transform